Let's see, could you get, yeah, recording started. And I'll just start sharing my screen. So last week we started diving into Pygame and started discussing how to control how it works and also drawing or filling things to the screen. So we learned how colors work and how to use that to maybe color the screen um, a certain color. And I have a few review questions to go over. We don't have to go through all of these, um, but I think there are some important ones here. And I do wanna go over the homework as well from last week. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get as many submissions as I would have wished. And uh, I completely understand if uh, you forgot about the assignment um, or maybe you're just really busy, but I do really want you to try and complete it every week. Um, it shouldn't take too long. Um, definitely shouldn't be taking more than 30 minutes of your time. And if you ever get stuck, don't know where to get started, message me, email me, and I'll be happy to help. All right, uh, if you couldn't figure out something, that's fine. We're gonna go over today's, uh, last week's homework um, in just a little bit. And moving forward, if you ever get stuck, just uh, reach out to me, uh, send an email, and. Uh, I'll get back to you probably within a day, um, most likely sooner. Um, so speaking of the time thing, um, that's actually the second question uh, on the review. And that's one of the things I do want to talk about. So last week, we, I showed this special command called pygame.time.clock.tick200. And so um, it looks like a really long thing, but it, it really shouldn't be too scary. If we break this down a little bit, um, this is something from Pygame, so that's why we say Pygame here. And then we're just accessing things inside the Pygame package. So we're accessing the time module from the Pygame package. Again, a package is just a collection of other packages and modules. And modules are just Python files. So we have the Pygame package, that's the thing that we installed. And within that big package, we have a section of it that deals with how time is kept track of, how it works within Pygame. So we're going into that module. Inside that module, there's something called a clock. So we get that using dot clock. And C is a capital C. So that gives us a clue that maybe it's a class. It's not too important here, but it's, a, it's just a class inside the module. And then we're doing something called tick 200. And so maybe I wasn't too clear about this last week, but there's two important measures of time within Pygame and how um, the game systems usually operate in. There's something called ticks and there's something called frames. So typically how these work is that, um, well, that actually it's very much the same thing. So ticks, I should say that it's maybe a little bit differently. We have ticks and we have seconds, right? So seconds is how we normally think of time, right? A second has passed, two seconds have passed, five seconds have passed. But how our game works, it has to work in um, a much smaller time unit than a second. Because if your game updates every single second, that's gonna look super slow, right? If you think about any game or interactive thing that you've worked with, it updates really fast, right? It updates so fast, it looks like everything's moving smoothly. If you are updating every single second, that's not gonna look very good. And so that's where ticks come in. Then the tick speed, the tick rate, whatever you wanna call it, that's just basically how many ticks are within a second. So if we say the tick speed is 20, that means there's 20 ticks that happen every single second. And each one of these ticks is where we will go through all of our game logic, where we update everything, where maybe we draw something, we update a color, anything like that. So a tick is kind of the unit that our game will operate on. Every single tick, something will happen, right? And you can control how fast these ticks happen. And so here, pygame.time.clock.tick200, is saying, hey, I want 200 ticks a second. So that means every single second that passes, I'm gonna update 200 times. 
Um, what I was saying earlier about frame rate, frame rate is essentially the same thing as tick speed. So the frame is basically everything you see. And so when I say frame rate, that's how often are we updating the picture? And typically every single tick, we're gonna be updating the display. So the frame rate and tick speed, pretty much the same thing here. Um, and this is related to the homework. So hopefully that uh, I can get a volunteer later to help me with controlling the time uh, of the homework solution. Um, I think the thing I wanna talk about is briefly the first one, pygame.display.flip. Does anyone remember what this uh, command does, what this function does? Flip is, kind of a confusing name for it. But as a hint, we had this inside of our loop. We had this inside of our main logic loop, and it runs every single time the loop runs. So the what flip does is it is the command that updates our screen. So if you're ever working with Pygame, you're drawing things, you're changing colors, and then you run it and you don't see anything happening, make sure that you're calling this display.flip function. Because display.flip is what tells Pygame, hey, I've drawn some stuff. I need you to update the display for the user. If you don't call this, then anything that you draw, anything that you change on the screen won't show up yet. It only shows up after you uh, say pygame.display.flip. And this is why it's in our loop. Every single time our loop runs, we want to update the screen, or at least that's how it was uh, in all the examples that we've seen. And finally, a uh, thing that I think is important, um, there were a couple ways of creating colors, but specifically, um, there's one way using three values, RGB values. And so I just want to remind everyone again how color works in Pygame. Typically, we're going to be using RGB values, so a red, green, blue value. So a color is really represented by three numbers, how much red is in it, how much green is in it, how much blue is in it. And depending on what values you have, how, you, how they're mixed together, you'll get pretty much any color that you want. And to get these values, uh, last time I showed that you can go like Google has a color picker. So if you search color picker, it'll give you a convenient way of saying, okay, I want maybe kind of a cyan color, really light blue. And maybe I want this shade. I have my RGB values right there. And so cyan turns out to be pretty strongly blue, pretty strongly green, which might make sense. And then this one I picked has a little, just a tiny bit of red in it. Um, and of course, this works for any single color that you want. Typically, uh, one thing that's uh, I didn't really mention is if all the RGB values are the same, you're going to get different shades of gray. So for example, if um, you have all zeros, that's just pitch black. If you have all 255s, that's uh, pure white. And if you have something in the middle, like, I don't know, 120, 120, 120, that's this shade of gray right here. So if you ever need shades of gray, it's really quick to do. Just pick one value for R, G, and B. Just give them equal values, and you'll get some shade of gray. Higher the value, the brighter it is. Lower the value, the darker it is. So going over the, the homework, let me pull up the instructions really quick. Um, I'm gonna pause my share a second. And so this was the homework. Um, I wanted you guys to create a program and I, won't, I gave you a specific frame rate to set it to. Um, and I wanted, the program to update the screen with a random color every single five seconds. So there are a couple steps involved. One is how do you set the frame rate? 
how do you make sure something runs every five seconds and how to make a random color and uh, fill the screen with it. Um, so maybe I have this example on my screen right here. So this example has, uh, right, should delete that. <laughs> and it has pretty much nothing at this point. So if I, if I run it, this is just our basic black screen. It does nothing else other than just having a black screen. So we have three steps. Can anyone help me with any of the three steps? Really the second one needs the first. So does anyone know how to either set the frame rate or be fill the screen with a random color? So pick a color. Um, Derek, how do we pick a random color? Yeah, so I've already imported random, which is a built-in Python library that helps us do random numbers. And so in the hint, I gave um, one function in this library called random.randint. So random.randint takes two values, a lower bound and an upper bound, and it gives you a random integer between those values. Uh, and it's inclusive, which is slightly weird. Um, typically, we've seen like either mixed or exclusive, but randint is inclusive of the boundaries. So if you say 110, then this will give you a random number 1 to 10, right? In our case, we want to generate a random value for the R, G, and B values. And what kind of boundaries do we need for that? Well, R, G, B values are always between 0 and 255. So we want a random integer from 0 to 255. And we just store this into a variable. So we can say like r equals random.randomint 0 to 55. And then really, we just do the same thing for the g and the b values, right? So we create a red value, a green value, and a blue value. And then what we can do is create a color out of this. And so the way we did it last time, and I had example code uh, posted, is pygame.color with a capital C. And then you just pass in your tuple of values, R, G, and B. Notice that I have two sets of parentheses here. One of them is because uh, I'm creating a new color, so I need parentheses with my inputs. And then the other set is because I'm passing in a tuple. Um, you can pass in a list. That's also fine. So if you want to pass in, maybe that's a little bit less confusing to look at. You can see here's our list of values, the R, G, and B values that we created randomly up here. And we're passing that to pygame.color, and that creates the color for us. So it turns those RGB values, and it actually produces the color. And maybe we want to store this into a variable. So I'll just call it C, because I'm feeling lazy today. And now we can fill the screen with it. And so the function for that, and again, there's example code, is pretty simple. Uh, we create our screen up here in line six. So all we do is say screen.fill, and then we pass in the color. In this case, I call this C. So if we run this code, we should see that it takes a little bit to load, but we get a random color here. Right, this is kind of a, I don't know what to call it, a teal color. If we run it again, we get kind of a yellow color. And you can see it's, it's working um, to what we wanted. It's filling our screen with a random color. Every single time I run this, I'm going to get a slightly different color from before. So that is one of the steps down. But now we have to do the timing of it. We want to, one, set the tick speed, and then two, keep filling in a different color every single five seconds. So right now, we fill it once at the start, but then it stays that forever. We want it now to change every single five seconds. 
So um, I want all of you guys to maybe think about this a little bit. While you guys are thinking, I'm going to change the code a little bit so that I have this random color generation in a function. And I'm just going to do this because we're going to be using this uh, multiple times. So um, if you ever use code multiple times, it's good to put it in a function instead of copy pasting. So I want you guys to think about how we can set the tick speed. That's the first step. And then two, how to keep track when five seconds have passed. Um, does anyone know how to do the first step, setting the tick speed? So uh, in the instructions for this homework, we wanted the frame rate or the tick speed to be 20. So we want to update 20 times a second. By default, it basically just updates as fast as it can. And so right now, the reason why we need to set the frame rate is because we don't know what it is right now. It could be even slightly random. And we just want it to be a fixed value. We want it to always be 20 ticks a second. All right, so I'll do this first step um, because it's a little bit more specific to Pygame. But the second step, I, I will ask for a volunteer. And if I don't get anyone, I will start calling. Um, but for the tick speed, at least, um, this is just a Pygame specific thing. And it's what was on the uh, review right here. So we have Pygame, the time module. And in there, we have this clock that we can use to set, set the tick speed. Um, and the important thing to remember about this is where to call this. And it's kind of weird, but we have to call this function every single time um, the screen is updated or every single time our loop is run. And so it's not something that we just set once. It's something that we do again and again and again and again. So we copy that maybe and go to our code. Um, I say pygame.time.clock.tick. And instead of 200, I want 20 frames a second, right? And if I run this now, um, we're not really going to see much of a difference at all. Um, that's because all we've done right now is update the tick speed. But we're still not changing what the screen looks like, right? We are still only picking a random color at the start and then filling it in and then just keeping like that forever. But since we have this line of code here, now we know that every time this loop runs, it's been exactly 1 20th of a second, right? 20, every 20 times, it's one second. So every single time, it's 1 20th of a second. So can anyone think of a way to use this now to trigger something to happen only every five seconds. A hint that was uh, provided and also kind of in the code here is I created this variable called frame count. And every single time the loop runs, I increase frame count by one. And so this just keeps track of how many times the loop has run. And I see a message in chat every time, every 100 times it runs random again. And that's a great idea. Um, Derek, can you say why you said 100 times? Why is it 100 times and not 50? Because or... 100 times 
A hundred times one twenty equals five seconds, and you said five seconds, so every five seconds it will rain down. Uh, yeah, I think I think you have the right idea. I'm not sure if I heard it correctly, but yes. Yeah, so, um, we have the tick rate, the frame rate, to be twenty, twenty times a second. And so since we want this to be updated every five seconds, that means we have to have this loop run a hundred times because 20 times five is a hundred. So it updates 20 times a second. We only want this to run every five seconds. So we need a hundred frames to pass. So that means every single hundred frames, we're going to pick a new color and fill the screen again. Um, so that's the idea, um, but does anyone, maybe someone different, um, how do we actually code that, right? So we have an idea, every single, every single time that this frame count um, gets 100 added to it, we want to uh, fill the screen in. So how do we check if um, we have that sort of condition? And I've been very hard to avoid saying a word, but maybe if I say it in a different way with the hint, we want to check if frame count is a multiple of 100, right? Because if it's a multiple of 100, every single time that's true, that means 100 frames have passed and we need to update the screen again. So how do we check if a number is a multiple of 100? We had a special operator for that. Sure. So uh, in the chat, I see mod, and mod is the correct operator. So um, the reason I wanted to spend time on this is because mod can show up um, pretty common when we have these sort of programs where we have keeping track of the frame count and we want to do something over and over and over again. Because Frame count is just going to go from zero to pretty much infinity. It's always going to go up and up and up and up and up and up. But once we apply a mod operator to it, it kind of turns it into a loop. So if we do frame count mod 100, if you remember, mod is the, like the remainder operator. So um, frame count mod 100 means take frame count, divide it by 100, and give me the remainder, what's left. And so if we do frame count mod 100, well, the remainder is always going to be between 0 to 99, right? The remainder can never be 100, or else then you just divide 100 another time. You could fit another 100 in, right? So the, once you take frame count and mod it by 100, you automatically turn it into kind of a loop that goes 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 98, 99, and then back to 0. And it gives you this kind of uh, cycling pattern. And sometimes, this is really good. So for example, like if you have thinking ahead, like an enemy that's walking back and forth on the screen and you want to maybe keep, make it turn around every single second or something like that, then you can apply some sort of mod depending on how fast uh, your frame rate is. And that will allow you to like see when, like it turns it into a periodic loop. So it goes to zero every single second and you just check if it's zero. So here we're taking our frame count, modding it by 100, and checking whenever it's zero, because that's when we check if it's a multiple of 100. So we say, if the frame count mod 100 is equal to zero, this means we take frame count, we divide it by 100, and check the remainder. If the remainder is zero, that means it's cleanly divisible by um, cleanly divisible by 100, which means it's a multiple of 100. And so this if statement is only true every single five seconds, because it ha you have to go 100 more for this to be true, and then 100 more after that, 100 more after that. And if you remember, our tick speed is 20, 20 times a second. So 100 is five times that. 
Um, and if this is true, we're just gonna pick a random color and fill the screen with it. And so while you guys were thinking earlier, I added a, a function, get random color, and it just does the thing selecting the random color for me. And I just did this because we're gonna use this in two places. And so to reduce copy pasting, I put it in the function. But we just say um, the color is calling our function. So this gives us a random color. And then we just do screen dot fill our color. And so if we run this program, we might see something interesting, but hopefully, yeah, there you go. It updated our color. We had a blue, now we're yellow. It's hard to see, but it just updated to green. And if we, I don't know, wanted to actually test if this was every single five seconds, I think I had a timer here. So the next time it changes, I'm gonna hit the timer. And we can see I hit it a little bit late, but it's counting up. And once it reaches five, you can see the screen updated. The timer is slightly off because it was a little bit late, but you can see every single five seconds, it's updating now. One thing to note is that if I got rid of this, tick speed thing, right? If I didn't set it to exactly 20 times a second, the program will still run, but it might not do what we want it to do. So here you can see it's changing color really fast and I, I don't want that. Uh, it's kind of hard on the eyes. And that's just because by default, the tick speed is pretty high. We don't have much going on in this loop. So it can run really, really, really fast. And so we want to uh, make it set to 20. And so um, I'm going to call on someone for this question. But if, for example, I updated this code and said the tick speed is no longer 20, the tick speed is now 50, uh, maybe <laughs> Esther. I'm gonna call on someone new. Um, how often now will the screen update with a new color? So I've changed the tick speed from 20 to 50. Uh, no problem. So uh, before we had the tick speed set to 20 uh, and checked if frame count was a multiple of 100 because um, we wanted to update every single five seconds. But now I've changed the tick speed from 20 up to 50. So I've made it faster. But how fast? How often will we now fill a random color? Notice I didn't change this if statement. I only updated the tick speed. No problem. Um, Jared, do you think you can help? 250. So uh, what is that 250? Uh, 250 seconds or? Uh, yeah. Two, 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 yeah. seconds. <laughs> yep, yeah, two. So this now is going to update every two seconds. And we can, again, run it and Time it. Oops, not my Spotify. But you can see. Oops, I think I started a little bit early. One, two is updated. Three, four, it's updated. Six, it's a little bit slow. Sometimes, if your computer is lagging a little bit, sometimes the tick speed will get messed up. But generally, you saw it was about two seconds every single time. And again, the reason for this, how we can calculate this is, well, we know that the tick speed is 50. What does the tick speed mean? It means this loop will run at 50 times a second, more or less. Um, if this runs 50 times a second, 
our frame count increases by one 50 times a second. And what is our condition for updating uh, the color? Well, our condition is if frame count is a multiple of 100. And how often will this be true? Well, every two seconds, we're increasing our frame count by 100. So it's every two seconds that this is going to be true. And that's how often we update the screen with a new color. So hopefully, after going through this example, it's a little bit more clear. Um, I would encourage, if you didn't try to do the homework um, previously, I would encourage you to uh, spend a little bit more time on it, maybe get it working, or um, if you're already close, uh, you don't have to if you don't if you feel comfortable, but you can also play around like this, changing some of the numbers. Here I changed the tick speed, but I should be able to ask the same question. So like if I change this to 200, uh, you should be able to calculate how often this, uh, it's going to be updating now. Um, things like that. It's just good to get practice in. Um, but I'm going to move on from here for now and talk about some new things for today's class. So uh, the topic for today's class, oh, also, by the way, uh, I will be posting a homework solutions. Uh, this is just the same solution that uh, I came up with. You guys, this will be posted to the GitHub and I'll uh, link it in Google Classroom. Um, for today's class, um, we're going to be discussing how to draw in Pygame. So drawing mostly basic shapes at this point, drawing rectangles, drawing lines, drawing circles, drawing arcs, um, basically the, the building blocks. And this is different from last week because last week we were just like filling in areas with different colors. Now we're gonna be drawing different shapes. Um, to do that, I'm gonna start with kind of a new blank program. I'm gonna keep the stuff that we've pretty much always had. So this time, I'm not really going to care about the frame rate. It's going to be the same every single time. Let me just get rid of everything I don't need. And so if we look at this is where I'm starting off from. I have a knit, my pie game. I create a screen that's 500 by 500. That's pretty random. I just chose this because it fits nicely. And then I have my loop. And all that's in my loop is pretty much this flip thing. I will make a comment right here. So here is, um, if you try to look at this without knowing anything, we can make some guesses. It's looping through this thing called pygame.events.get. It's, you can imagine like some sort of list of events. And if the event type is a quit event, I'm exiting the program. And the reason we have this here is actually, it's kind of interesting. Uh, and this might be helpful to you if we didn't have this, right? And I ran my program, everything looks normal so far, but then I have something that, well, it's not responding. Um, that's not what it's supposed to do, but I think uh, this is having some issues. Let me change the frame rate, um, the time dot, Maybe this will help. Let's see. Well, what I was trying to show <laughs> um, is that when you hit the X in your window, that's causing this pygame.quit event. And so actually, there's a way to make it so that even if you hit the X, it won't close the window. And that might be kind of confusing. And you might get stuck in this case where the window shows up and you don't know how to get rid of it. And there's two easy ways of doing that. Um, one is just stopping your program from running. When you stop the program, your window will close. Um, it like just forces it to. Another way, there's a keyboard shortcut. You can do Control C, and that's another. Um, you have to do it in the terminal, so I wouldn't really recommend it. So I would recommend sticking with this stop button, but you could, there's a short 
code for it as well. Um, but yeah. Let me just here. Hopefully this is fine. Yeah, so we just have our normal window, does nothing, and we want to start drawing some things onto it. And before we get into drawing, I do have to discuss a little bit about the coordinate system in Pygame. And so uh, this is probably a little bit different from what you're used to in maybe like math class. We do have an XY coordinate system in Pygame, but there's a very important difference. Zero, zero is not at the center. It's not at the bottom left corner. It's actually at the top left corner. So the top left corner of your screen or your window is zero, zero. And anything to the right of it is increasing x. Anything below that is increasing y. So the x makes more or less sense, right? Um, we're used to this. Positive x means more to the right. Negative x means more to the left, right? However, y is a little bit, is the one that's kind of flipped, right? So if you want to go down, you actually want more y. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit opposite. Uh, don't really ask me why they did this, but this is very standard for computer graphics, right? Um, if you're working with any sort of graphics library, they're usually, usually using this coordinate system, right? So we're going to be playing around with this a lot. So you'll develop a feeling to it. But especially for like the homework or things coming up, um, if you're ever confused, I really do recommend just drawing it out on paper. So like maybe I want this square to look like this, but it's not drawing correctly. I would draw it out on paper, kind of label everything, make sure your axes are correct, and um, go from there. And so I see a question, do we pick points and let PyCharm draw or something? We're going to see it's, it's pretty much like that, yeah. Um, the first thing that we're going to draw is a line. And so there is a documentation for it. Unfortunately, the PyCharm, uh, the PyGame website is, uh, they've kind of taken it down because of current events going on. But we can look at an archived version of it. And so instead of going to the normal um, page for it, uh, we have this one that I'll put in chat. So this link goes to kind of the API for how to draw a whole bunch of different things, right? And it might take a little bit time to load because this is an archive. It's like someone stored the page. This is how it looked like a week ago. We're accessing it. So everything is a little bit slower than normal, uh, but it works. So we're going to first look at pygame.draw.line. So if we click on that, we are brought to the documentation. And you can see there's a couple things going on here. So there's two ways of calling this. We have to give it a surface. And so I briefly mentioned this, but a surface is basically whatever you're drawing on. And the only surface that we have at this moment is the screen. When we created our display, it returns a surface. And now we're going to be using that to draw on it. So we give it a surface. Then we give it a color. Then we give it a starting position and an end position. And the only thing that's a little bit weird is maybe the start position, the end position. If we look at the documentation, we can see that the start position is a tuple of insert floats insert floats. So uh, you have to give it two numbers in a tuple or a list of two numbers. So it can take either a tuple or a list. It doesn't really care. That's the start position and the end position. The width is an optional thing that you can put in the line. Um, it just determines how thick the line is. That's kind of what you'd expect. So. If we go to our program now and say we want to draw a line across the screen. So starting at the uh, top left corner, going to the bottom right corner. What we want to do is 
Um, I'm actually not going to do it in the loop because we only need to draw it once. We don't have to draw it a million times. But I'm going to do pygame dot draw dot line, right? Because we're drawing a line. And then if we go back, we have to first give it a surface. The only surface that we have is the screen. So screen. Then we have to give it a color. And so let me actually define a color up here. So um, let me define the, the cyan color. And that's pygame.color and RGB values. That's going to be mostly green and mostly blue. So 0, 255, 255. So I make a color, I store it into a variable, and I pass it in here. Cyan. Then I have to do the starting position and the end position. So I'm going to use tuples. I didn't provide values yet. And then I want a width. And for now, maybe a width of 10 is fine. So can anyone tell me I, the starting position for the line? Again, I want to go from the top left to the bottom right. So what is the top left coordinate? Um, three, zero. That might be a typo. Um, yeah, zero, zero, right? So again, coordinate system, zero, zero is always the top left. And so now we want the bottom right corner. Uh, as a hint, my screen size is 500 by 500. So um, that's how big the screen is. Can anyone else, maybe someone different, tell me what the bottom right corner should be in terms of our coordinate system? So we have zero, zero in the top left. What is the coordinate for the bottom? Right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Who's in here? Maybe Wen Tian. Can you tell me what coordinate? All right. So Jarrett said 500, negative 500. I, I like how you're thinking. That's how it would be in a normal coordinate system where we go right and then we go down. However, the thing to keep in mind, it's, it was really annoying. I know it is, but our y-axis is kind of flipped. So going down is actually positive y. Yeah, it's weird, but you get used to it. You'll develop a feeling for it. So what our end position is actually going to be is going to be 500, 500. And so if I run the program now, we should see, takes a little second to load, but boom, we have a line that goes through our screen. Right? It starts at 0, 0, it goes to 500, 500. That's exactly diagonal. Um, maybe really quickly, uh, I will get to maybe the thickness, but let's try to draw another cyan line. But now I want it the other diagonal, right? So here I did the top left to the bottom right. But now, let me open up this window again. Instead of that way, I want it the other diagonal. Um, and so Derek says 500, 0, and 0, 500. Um, yeah, I agree with that. So our starting point is going to be maybe this corner. And so if we think about our system, 0, 0 is here. We're going to the right. So that's positive x plus x. x is normal. So 500, 0. And then we want to go down here, which is going to be 0 for x, because it didn't move at all. But we're going down. And down is positive in the system. So we were going down to 500. So if we draw another cyan line, it's going to be 500, 0, and 0, 500. Right. And now we see we have this x shape. Um, for the thickness, yeah, we can definitely change the thickness. So we can make one thinner. We can make one really thick, maybe. And you can see the difference right there. So this is thickness 1. This is thickness 100. And it's pretty much basically how many pixels, uh, pixel thickness it is. Um, so it did mention in the documentation, if you have a thickness of like 0, it's just not going to show up, right? 
if you have a negative thickness, it's just not going to show up. Right? It doesn't give you an error. It just doesn't draw anything. Right? So negative thickness, not really useful at all. So I'm going to keep the cross there. That's where we're at. So this is pretty much um, how drawing works. We have some sort of shape. And depending on the shape, we give it coordinates, we give it dimensions, whatever, in our coordinate system that we're working in. So the next thing that we're going to look at drawing is, we did lines, uh, rectangles. So rectangles, um, uh, if we look at the documentation, uh, oh, actually, one thing I did want to point before moving on, pi game. It's a little bit confusing. I don't really like how it does this, um, but it has a feature that makes our life easier, but also a little bit more confusing. So notice from before, pygame.draw.line takes a surface, a color, start point, end point, width, or thickness. Um, the color here, I said pygame.color 0, 255, 255. However, you can. So I actually pass in a color object, right? Because I create a color using my tuple. But Pygame has some shortcuts. You can actually just pass in a tuple right here, right? So even though something like 0, 255, 0, this is not a color. This is just a tuple of it. But what Pygame will say is, hey, I'm expecting a color. You gave me a tuple. I'm just going to try to convert it into a color. And so it does that by passing this into the color constructor, and it creates a color using this tuple. And so everything works. But it's a little bit confusing because the documentation says it wants a color, but here we're giving it a tuple of ints. It's, it's a little bit weird. So just to show you that this works, you can see here now we have a green line and we have a cyan line. Again, this is technically not a color. But Pygame converts it to a color for us. Um, this is relevant because for the draw rectangle, it's going to take a rectangle as one of the parameters, and we're going to use this shortcut. You can define a rectangle by four values, and instead of creating a rectangle ourselves, we're just going to pass in those four values and have Pygame handle it itself. Uh, the other thing I want to point out, it's a little bit harder to see. We're going to see it better um, later on. But uh, how things are drawn is everything is just drawn on top of each other. So notice it's a little bit hard to see because of the colors. Let me try to pick a different color. Maybe um, uh, or, uh, we'll just use this. So it's a little bit hard to see, but the blue line is actually on top of the green line. And that's just because in our code, we draw the cyan line after the green line. And so if you like switch the order, then it's going to look slightly different. Everything's just layered on top of each other, one after another. Anyways, back to rectangles. Um, a rectangle, the way you draw it is pretty similar. Starts out, you need a surface, where to draw it on. A color, what does it look like? And then you have to pass in a rectangle object. And the question is, how do you create a rectangle object? Well, you do it with four values. Um, we're going to really do it with this. So you can create a rectangle by passing a left top with height. So what are these values? They're kind of grouped together. So left top is the top left corner of the rectangle, and it's an x, y value coordinate. So we give it some top left corner, and then we give the width and the height of the rectangle. So the width is the x dimension, essentially, and the height is the y dimension. So for example, a width of 50 and a height of 20 is going to give you a really wide and short um, rectangle. So it's going to be like horizontal. A width of 20 and a height of 50 is going to give you a really tall and skinny rectangle that way, a vertical one. So I don't know what kind of rectangle we want to draw on our screen, but I'm going to pick maybe, maybe I want to draw kind of a plus sign. I'm not going to 
go from the boundaries, I'm just going to draw a plus sign in the middle of our screen right here. So I want one rectangle that goes here. I want another rectangle that goes there. And to make this clear, I'm actually going to sketch it out ahead of time. And so I want to show you um, how to really feel comfortable with coordinates. So I'm going to take what we already have, and I'm going to put it into paint. And if we take a second, if we look at what we have here, I'm zooming in a little bit on, on our picture. Uh, and this is where you can see the cyan is on top of the green. It's a little bit clearer now. But let's draw what I want. Maybe I'm going to use purple. Uh, for these squares. And I want a plus sign that looks like this. So I want one rectangle like that and another rectangle that looks like that. And so the question is, how do I do this in the code? And we have to remember how the rectangle is, oops, how the rectangle is drawn. We give it a top left corner and then a width and a height. So this is one top left corner. And this is the other top left corner of the rectangle. And we have to just uh, decide some values right here. So maybe I want this to be a, a height of 20 and uh, maybe a width of, let's go 200. All right. So, let me draw it so it's not completely overlapping, maybe. So we're just focusing on the horizontal one. This dimension is going to be 200. And so now we have our width and the height, but now we have to figure out what our top left corner is. And maybe one thing to note is here, right in the middle, this is going to be the middle of our screen. Our screen is 500 by 500. So this coordinate right here in the middle is going to be exactly 255, 255. Right? This is exactly 255, 255. So to figure out what this top left corner is, well, we just have to figure out how it is related to 255, 255. We know it has to go up a little bit and it has to go right a little bit or it goes left a little bit. And each of these is basically just half of our dimension. So we go up by 10 units and go left by 100 units. Or also, I said this wrong. This is not 255, it's 250. So our center is 250, 250. And we want to go up 10, left 100. So can anyone tell me what this coordinate should be? You have to use a little bit of math. And you have to keep track again, what is up, what is down, what is plus y, what is minus y. So maybe let's do the y coordinate first. Or, OK, we'll do both. So 150, 240, um, Derek says. And I agree with that. So the way we get this is, one, the up and the left, you can think of it as changing the x value and the y value. So what is the x value difference? Well, the x value difference is it's 100 units to the left. And x is normal. So left means negative. So we take our starting value, 250, and subtract 100. So this is 150. And then we take our y value. We're going up 10 units. Up in the system, if you remember, is negative. So we take 250, we subtract 10, we get 240. So to summarize this, we want a rectangle that starts at 150, 240, has a, a height of 20, and a width of 200. And that draws our horizontal looking rectangle here for the plus sign, right? 
And so if we go to the code, maybe I'll draw that really quickly. Pygame.draw.rect and screen is our surface. The color, um, I'm not gonna come up with a good color. I'm just gonna use red. And then now is where we define our rectangle. And here's where we use the shortcut. Our rectangle is defined by the four points. We already know what they are. The, um, the left, the top, so the X and the Y. So that's 150, 240. And then the width and the height. So the width is 200, the height is 20. And if we run this, we should see our horizontal rectangle drawn. And you can see it's centered properly. And for the vertical one, I'm just going to do it. You can verify it later. But let's see. Um, we want these dimensions to be flipped. And I believe we can just flip the x y coordinates as well. Um, let me think that really quick. Yeah. So you can see now we have our plus sign. And this is just, again, just you know, work with the coordinate system. You usually have some sort of reference point that you know. Usually you go with 0, 0 as your reference point. But in this case, I know I wanted it centered at the middle. And so I know where the middle is, 250, 250, 250. And so I can reference it based on that. So you usually pick a reference point, and then you figure out where your corner is, you figure out what your width and height are. They're usually related to each other. It sounds like a lot of steps, but you really get a hang of it after you practice. Um, I know I'm close to the end of time, so I'm going to jump ahead. Um, I'm going to save drawing circles and arcs to a later time. Um, and I'm just going to jump to the homework um, at the end of today. So you have kind of two choices for the homework. Um, I really just want you to practice drawing the different shapes. So really, we only did lines and rectangles today. If you want, you feel free to look at the documentation and try to figure out how the other ones work. Really, if you understand how lines and rectangles work, you can look at the documentation and you can figure out pretty much the other shapes. Um, for example, if we go to the documentation and maybe like draw dot circle and go to wherever that is, you can see how a circle is drawn. You still have a surface to draw it on, a color to draw it on. And then a circle, how is that defined? Well, you have to have a center and you have to have a radius. And you might be able to guess this, but the center has to be kind of our coordinate, like a coordinate value for wherever the center is. And then a radius is just the radius. It's just a number. It's not a duple anymore. But there's circles. And if you look at the top, there's polygons. There's ellipses, arcs, all of these different things. Feel free to explore if you want more ways to draw things. But you can either go the creative route and Really, I'm fine with you drawing anything that you like. Maybe something that'd be cool is probably a lot of flags are pretty simple designs. You could probably draw a flag with rectangles and lines and circles. Um, you can draw a happy face. You can draw whatever you want. Um, the other route is if you don't want to be as creative, I have just kind of uh, just an example I came up with. Um, I want you to take our screen, draw squares in every corner, and then lines connecting them. So uh, I want four squares on each of the corners, or one square on each of the corners, so four total. I just said different colors. And then I want you to draw diagonal lines with red, and then uh, basically the, the square with blue lines. Um, so pick one, you don't have to do both. Um, and that'll be the homework for next week. Again, I really do want you to try this. 
it really shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. If you get stuck, my email will be posted and just reach out, uh, happy to help. Um, although I guess I would recommend starting early so that you have time to email and get a response from me. Although I will try to be uh, as fast as I can. Um, but yeah, that's all I had for today's class. Hopefully learning how to draw was a little bit interesting and we're gonna pick this up um, next week. Thank you. And if you don't have any questions, uh, you're free to go.